I'm going to be sharing with you how to make this barn door for under $120. We're going to start off by cleaning out the space that we're going to be working in. Next, we're going to unbox the hardware that I actually purchased from Amazon for about $72. Here we're going to lay out the hardware on the floor and what I've decided to do is use a piece of wood that the hardware can sit on. This just provides a little bit of extra strength uh, for the hardware. Once you have the hardware laying on the wood, we're going to measure out an inch from each end and mark that so that we can cut our wood to length. Once we have the wood cut, we're gonna lay the hardware back on that piece. And then we're gonna make sure that the hardware is directly centered and mark that out. We're also gonna mark out the holes for the hardware screws. Now to prep our wall. Here we're gonna measure out exactly where we want the hardware to sit and we're gonna use our stud finder to mark out where all of the studs are along the wall. Once we've marked where the studs are gonna go on our piece of wood, we're gonna drill some pilot holes. We want two screws to go into each stud for maximum support. I'm also going to countersink these so that the nails sit flush into the wood. Next, we're going to drill the pilot holes for the hardware screws. Now we're going to sand everything down and hang it up on the wall. We're going to want to use our level to make sure that everything is nice and straight. As you can see here, the piece of wood does look a little bit slanted. This is because the ceiling is not straight. As I found out through this process, most homes do not have absolutely straight walls and ceilings, so you may also come across this issue, but I've decided to just make sure that the wood is on straight to ensure that the hardware is on straight and in doing so the door won't slide off either way so it might not look perfect but it will function better than trying to have it level with the ceiling Now we're just gonna fill the nail holes for the screws that went into the studs with wood filler so we can have a nice clean finish when we paint. We're just gonna sand everything down so it's nice and smooth and then we're gonna paint it the color of our choice. So I've decided to use the exact same color as the wall just so that it blends in a bit better. Now to prep for the door, you're going to need to measure how wide you want the actual door to be. I decided to do 2 inches over on either side. I decided to do this project in a cost effective way so I ended up buying dimensional lumber. These are 1x8s and I only needed about 3 of them. As you can see dimensional lumber has rounded edges. So I'm just going to shave off about a quarter of an inch on either side uh, on my table saw to give them just a cleaner look. So the first thing we're going to want to do is cut all of the pieces to length.
Now we want to sand every piece smooth. I'm starting with an 80 grit sandpaper and then using a 220 sandpaper. I actually had a mirror sliding glass closet door in my garage, so I've decided to just take the metal frame off and use the mirror for this project. Here I'll be using my Ryobi router to notch out the wood so that the mirror sits flush in the back. Now I'll be using my Craig pocket hole jig to put some pocket holes into the top and bottom pieces. You want to make sure that you notch out the wood for the mirror first so that these screws sit underneath the mirror. The hardware comes with a guide that the door can glide on so that the door doesn't move back and forth when you're opening and closing it. So I'm using my router to notch out the wood for that guide here.
Next thing you're gonna wanna do here is tighten these stoppers. Uh, what these are gonna do is stop the door from sliding too far and fall off the rails. Once you have that tightened, do the same on the other side. And when the door opens, it stops right where you want it. the screw because this all comes with the hardware and what you're going to want to do is have them sit right on top of the door and screw it down so that the door doesn't even if it wiggles back and forth it doesn't come off of the rails So the last thing we want to do here is put the guide in. So I notched out the wood underneath here. So this essentially is just going to get screwed down and the door is going to be able to ride on this rail. So I've marked out exactly where I want it to go so that uh, the door stays on this rail, whether it's open or closed. So you just need to measure it out for yourself to make sure that it stays on the rail. So as you can see, the door sits on the rail all the way from the beginning until the end, and it doesn't come off. Every single day.